So for these problems, you've seen them before, and I've asked you to graph them before. However, when I asked you to graph them before, I asked you to graph them on a number line, which was like this. And then here you had negative five, and then you would shade everything greater, right? And you put an open circle because of the little, there's no bar, right? Okay, fantastic. This is not what it tells you to do here, is it? It doesn't say graph the inequality on the number line, does it? It says graph the inequality in the coordinate plane. When you think of the word plane, think of a piece of paper. This is a plane, okay? Imagine it has no depth, so this is a plane, okay? So basically what that means is they want you to graph it on this coordinate plane, right? The X and the Y. So they don't want you to graph it on a number line. They want you to graph it in a plane. Well, the first thing you need to do is imagine that this is an equation and graph it like you would the equation. So remember, when you have X only, what kind of equation is that? So imagine it said X equals oh, negative five. Line. That is a vertical line. So then what you need to do is you need to mark one, two, three, four, five, and then you would draw the vertical line. Now I have an eraser, so unless you have an eraser, don't do that. That would be if it said equals, okay? But it doesn't say equals. It says greater than, and notice that there is no equal bar, which means that the line itself is not included in the graph. And the way that any book and Alex will tell you that the line is not included in the answer is they make it a dotted line. And in Alex, there will be a button you can click that will make it a dotted line. So this is a boundary actually. It's actually not part of your answer, but it is the boundary for your answer, okay? I still need to shade. Remember we were shading on the number line? I still need to shade. But which side of this vertical line should I be shading? To the left side or to the right side? If the X values are supposed to be greater than negative five. So, to the, to right, the right. To the right side. So this, you, and then the, Alex, all you do is click the shading button and then click on the right side and it'll shade it for you. But the answer, the solution is the shaded piece, okay? The dotted line is not really my answer. It's just the boundary of my answer. You do have to draw it in Alex in order for you to tell Alex that it's shaded, but only up to there, okay? So it's a little bit different than the number line. It's in two dimensions now instead of just one. And why is it that? Because my x is greater than negative 5 over there to the right, correct? But did they really tell me anything about the y's? No. No. So the y's could be positive or they could be negative. That's why you have everything above the x-axis and everything below the x-axis shaded. Okay? It could be any of that stuff. So the same thing for part b. Imagine that the equation is just x equals 2. Again, what does that look like? It's another vertical line, isn't it? I'm just going to put VL for vertical line. But this time, it's at positive 2. And this time, notice that there is an equal bar on the um, inequality, right? That means when there's an equal bar, it does stay a solid line. Okay? So you do not click on the dotted line. You click on the solid line when you graph it. You will, on paper, it's easy. And Alex, in order for you to draw this dotted line in the computer, you're going to have to put a point here, and then you're going to have to put another point so that it makes a vertical line. Okay? So you're going to have to grab a little pencil, put a point at the negative 5x, right? And then put another point either above or below, but still where x is negative 5. Then you'll hit the button that says dotted line. It'll draw the dotted line. Then you hit the shaded button, and then you click on either the left side or the right side. Okay? Same thing for this one. If I know x is equal to 2, I'm going to put a dot where x is equal to 2. And then I need another dot either above it or below it to make it a vertical. Once I got those two dots, I will click on the solid line in Alex. And then click on the two dots. It'll draw the solid line. Then I need to pick which side to shade. 
And for this one, am I shading the left or the right? The left side. Mm -hmm, because this time, x's are less left than 2. Yeah. So then it should be this side that gets shaded. Now, Alex shades a lot prettier than me, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> okay. What about the y's, though? If I imagine that it said y equals 6, what kind of graph is that? It's a horizontal. It's a horizontal line. So then when I go to graph it, I have to go to positive 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and draw my dot there. And where would I draw the second dot so that the line is horizontal? It's like a table. It's flat, right? I would have to either go to the left or to the right to make sure that it stays horizontal. Then what kind of line would I pick? A dotted line or a solid line? A solid line. Solid line no, is not that's correct. A dotted line, dotted line uh -huh. because of your sign, you don't have it. It doesn't have an equal, yeah, so the graph it. is not part of my answer, right? <laughs> so no equal bar means that a dotted line. That's okay. I know. I thought I was knowing it. But then that in my where am I shading? Because it's not left or right now. It's up or down. It's the top or the bottom. Yeah. So, so am I shading the top or am I shading the bottom? Go up the top of it. it says Y is greater. So then in the computer, it'll be prettier, but it would be everything above that line. Keeps timing me out. Not my video, but the projector is getting sleepy. Okay. What about this one? This one here. If I imagine it just says y equals zero, where is y equal to zero? It's gonna be an origin. Uh huh. And what kind of line should it be? Solid. It is should be solid. But is it going to be a vertical line or horizontal line? Horizontal, horizontal line. So that means where do I put the second dot to tell Alex to, to graph the left it? Or to the right? Correct. Then it'll make it flat, right? Make sure you click solid line before you click on the two dots. Okay. Now, again, I still have a top region. Let me put my arrow so that you notice I have a solid line in there. You're going to be at the bottom on this one. Correct. It says less than zero, right? So it should be this side shaded. I got a dumb question on my head. So where does your equal to come in there for that? So The see. equal to means either your line is, is solid. And if there's no equal to bar, then the line should be dotted. Because equals means that that is part of your answer. If there is no equal bar, that means it's not it's part of your answer, which is why it's invisible over here. The dotted line basically represents an invisible boundary. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have to see it so they make it dotted, right? <laughs> but it is invisible. Now, those are the vertical and horizontal, so they kind of start with those. This is a little bit easier. Then eventually they're going to get into the diagonals. And so for the diagonals, you have to pay attention, okay? So let me get over here to the next side. And now we've got two of the diagonals. How do I know they're diagonals? Because they have X and Y, right? When it's just X, it's vertical. When it's just Y, it's horizontal. But if you've got both, it's going to make it Okay. Now the top one is ready to graph. I can graph that. I can get a point and I can get the second point and I can draw the line whether it's solid or dotted. We could do that. So what dot would I start at? Two. Uh -huh. Positive, Positive two. two. So I'm going to go here. Let's make a little mark so you can know why I went there, right? Okay, then from that y-intercept, how do I move? Down one. Down one. Over two. And then to the right two. So there's my second point. Now, which button am I going to click in Alex? Am I going to click the solid line or the dotted line? So solid line. Right. This little thing here means it's going to be solid. So then I'm just going to graph it. 
and then and I should have grafted along the whole thing but I didn't but it's okay here's where it gets a little tricky it says the y values should be less than or equal to this line now there's not necessarily a straightforward top and bottom what you need to focus on is the y-intercept and think of the top and the bottom of that so here's my y-intercept am I going to be graphing above it or below it, below it. correct which means I actually have to shade everything on this side so it's actually all of this. In the computer, it's easy because you just click the button, right? On paper, it's a little bit, you gotta think about it, okay? On the computer, all you would do is click the shaded button and then click on, since it says less than, you would pick on a point that's less than your y-intercept, right? And then it would shade it for you. But you'll notice when you do click on a y value less than that y intercept, it actually shades the whole thing, everything below that line. Okay. This one is the same thing, it's just not ready. Okay, it's like a pre step. I need to make this look like that before I can graph it. Okay, so I need to get the y by itself. So I'm gonna minus the 2x. We like the x's in front, right? So we'll leave the minus 3y, minus 2x in front, positive 12 in the back. And then I gotta get y by itself, so I'm gonna divide by negative three. So I'm gonna get y all by itself. This is gonna turn into positive 2 thirds. That's gonna turn into negative four. Remember when we were doing inequalities before? They were just like equations. There was only one difference. If you divided by a negative, your inequality symbol should flip over. And because we divided by negatives down here, this thing needs to turn around. Exactly. That's the biggest issue with this one, is that some people will forget to flip it over when they divided by a negative. If this had been plus 3y, I would have been dividing by positive 3s, and that symbol would have stayed exactly the same. But because I divided by negatives, it basically flips the whole number line all over, all the way around. Now I can graph it. So let me draw my little graph paper thing. And so where's my y-intercept here? Four, negative four. So one, two, three, four. There it is. And then how am I going to move? You're gonna move up two. Mm -hmm. So you're up two, to one, two, three. So right here. And is this line going to be solid or dotted? It's gonna be solid. Right, it has an equal bar. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, you hear me. You hear me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now pay attention to the Y values. Here's my y-intercept. Am I going to click, I'm gonna click on the shaded button, but am I going to click a y-value bigger or am I gonna click a y-value smaller? Because it says greater, right? right? So then when you click right here, it's gonna automatically shade the whole side. It's gonna shade everything over there. Because it doesn't necessarily say y is just bigger than the y-intercept, right? It says y is bigger than the whole line, right? Because some people get confused when you were like, well, you're down here, and that well, those y values down here are smaller. <laughs> it doesn't say this. It says that, the whole line, okay? Okay, we're almost there. We got two more. Now we're going the opposite. So they gave us the graph, and they want us to write the equation, okay? So for the first one, what kind of line is that? Horizontal, vertical, diagonal? What kind of line is that first one? This That's one horizontal. here. Horizontal. Horizontal. Yep. So I know immediately that my equation is only going to have what letter? Y. Y. So it's going to be Y. And what Y coordinate? Y1. Well, I have one marker here and a second marker there, right? Uh, two. So it's going to be two. 
Now, is my inequality symbol going to have a bar on it? No. No, it's invisible. It's dotted, right? No. So no bar. It's either going to be less than or it's going to be greater than. It's going to be less than. Because the bottom is shaded. So it should be less than. So it's three components here, right? Which variables do I need? What should the line look like? And then what symbol should I put in there? So here, it's vertical now, right? So what letter will be in my equation? X only. What number is going on here? Negative 2. Will this one have a solid line? I mean, will it have a equal bar or no equal bar? It's solid, so it does have an equal bar. But will it be less than or greater than? It's to the right. Greater than. Bottom one is, of course, harder, right? Because it's not vertical or horizontal, which means I should have x's and y's, right? So I should have, think of the old one, right? mx plus b. The only thing different is, is I don't know what goes in there. Because it's not an equal, right? Uh -huh. So do I know what the m is? Not yet. i put x. Do I know what the B is? Yep. Mm -hmm. What is it? One, two, three, four. Yep, negative four. And then the M, I can get from counting, right? Or I could get from using the formula, whichever way you do it. But if I go from here to here, I would have to go up one, two. So I am rising two. And then from there, I would have to go over one, two, three. And I went to the right three. So positive three. So basically what I have is positive two-thirds x, and those doubles make it minus four. But I don't know which symbol to put in there, right? I'm still missing this little symbol here. Okay. Should it have an equal bar? Yeah. It's solid. So it definitely should have an equal bar. Look at the y-intercept. Did I shave above? Or did I shade below? Less than. I shaded below, so it should be less than. So those are a little bit harder, right? But it's kind of putting two ideas together. It's putting the line stuff, but then you have to think of what symbol to put in there, depending on what was shaded. And you have to know when to put the bar and when not to put the bar. Okay. But that's it. That's all I have. Well,